Hey guys, week six of the Inside Out Life devotion today. I'm going to be sharing around the idea of remembrance and I'm going to go as far as to call it the discipline of remembrance because I think it's probably a vital part of our worship lives and there's you know probably some very practical things we can be doing to integrate it into our own devotional lives to be leading ourselves in worship. I think it's a way we can continually remind ourselves of who God is and what he has done in our lives and this inspires us to keep trusting him and worshiping him. So what do I mean by the discipline of remembrance? That's a really good question. Well, I think there's probably certain rituals and rhythms we can be putting into place in our own, our own worship lives that might just help, help us do this. As we look through the Old Testament in particular, we see many examples of where the people of Israel used something physical, an altar or a pillar of stone or even just stones themselves, something physical in their worship of God. And it was to remind them of what God had done in their history and also in their lives. I've got two favorite stories. The first one is in the book of Joshua. So, you know, the history was Moses has led the people of Israel uh, out, out of Egypt. So he's led them into freedom. They're going, through the prom they're going through the wilderness for years and years and years. They've hit the edge of the promised land. Moses has passed away and Joshua is leading the charge. So Joshua is leading the people and, and they've got this hurdle before they can get into the promised land and it's the River Jordan. They have to cross the River Jordan and it's a big river. It's flooding at the time and uh, so God causes a great miracle and he stops the water. He cuts it off so that they can cross over and of course this is reminiscent of uh, Moses and leading the people through the sea where God parts, parts the waters. So God does this amazing miracle and it's, it's a, a symbol for them, a really significant moment for them as the people of Israel. And in the midst of that, God says to Joshua, he says, tell the people, he says, take 12 men, one from each tribe, one representative, tell them to pick up a stone from the river and take it out of the river, put it on the other side of the river as a sign of remembrance of what I have done here today. So they do that, they pick up a stone, 12 stones, they put them on the other side of the river and they create an altar, an altar to worship God and a physical reminder that this was the place where God stopped the waters and led us into the promised land. We see another example in 1 Samuel uh, chapter seven. I love this story where again, God is uh, with the people of Israel. They're in this ba battle, this great battle against the Philistines. And God leads them to a, an amazing victory, a very significant victory, which you can read more about. And at that place, Samuel sets up a stone and he calls it the Ebenezer stone, which literally means the stone of help. And he says, thus far, God has helped us. And it's, it's a place to remind the people this is where God actually helped us. And because he's helped us in the past, you know, we can trust that he will not stop helping us. He will be with us. There were physical rituals and symbols to help them remember what God had done and to encourage them that this is the same God that was still with them, the same God who would continue to be faithful and to not let them down. And I think it's the same with us today. And one of these big rituals, which many of us uh, take place in, is our gathered times, whether it's on a Sunday or midweek in a small group or whatever, our, our gathered times of worship together. You know, as we sing songs, songs with these amazing words, often straight out of the Psalms that remind us of who God is and his faithfulness. You know, there's times when, you know, I might be going through a battle or something hard and when I see these words or I sing these words, it just lifts my eyes to God and it helps me remember this is the God who will not let me down. And not only I can sing it over myself, but we sing it over each other as believers. We, we remind each other, we encourage each other and we spur each other on in faith. Another physical example, um, something we do on, on Sundays often is having communion together. The bread and the juice uh, re representing Jesus' blood and his body given for us as he died on the cross. 
physical things that we can use to remember God's faithfulness. Some traditions use other sacramental elements, uh, you know, incense or spoken liturgies or symbols like genuflecting, different things that just help remind us of, of what God has done. But I wonder today, aside from the gathered worship times, are there ways that you can include this discipline of remembrance in your own devotional life? And I'd actually love to hear your feedback today. I'd love to hear your thoughts because I'm sure there's so much wisdom from you uh, around some of the ways in which you do this. So if you feel comfortable to, I'd love you to comment and share some of those ideas around maybe some of the things you integrate into your own life. For me, it's often journaling and, uh, and there are deliberate times where I need to just practice thankfulness and remember what God has done. You know, one idea even just as I'm talking now could be to have one particular day where all you do is uh, remember, look back and recount God's faithfulness. It could be Thankful Friday or Thankful Fridays as they call it here in Melbourne on our Christian radio station. Are there other ways that you can uh, be, you know, remembering using this discipline of remembrance in your devotional life? Uh, there's a great prayer called the Prayer of Examine, which I often use. It's an Ignatian prayer, and I'll I'll attach a link as well in the comments. That's a great way just to look back on what God has been doing and to be reminded of who He is. There might be other things like lighting a candle as a, a physical symbol of God's presence. Um, or, you know, other thoughts, post in the comments, let me know what other ways in which we can foster this discipline of remembrance in our everyday devotional lives. I'm not going to be posting next week. Uh, I'm going to have a moment of remembrance. It's Good Friday, so uh, we won't have a devotional next week. Take time out to remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross and probably not the week after we've got school holidays and things here. So in a couple of weeks, we'll be back with the Inside Out Life devotions. But have a great week and, uh, and a great uh, preparation into Holy Week as we start to remember this beautiful season of Easter and what Jesus has done on the cross for us. Have a great week.